Hello everybody. 2014 was a terrible year. You had the Ebola virus, which was definitely the worst virus that I can think of in recent memory. There was the bizarre and wacky disappearance of the Malaysia Airlines Flight 370, and other things that I saw on the 2014 Wikipedia page that weren't important enough to bring up. But the worst of all was that Vine was at its peak of popularity. Vine was essentially TikTok before TikTok existed, only slightly better. I mean, the only thing worse about Vine than TikTok was the fact that the creators on Vine actually thought that they were talented, as opposed to the TikTok creators who are just like Omega Black Pill, they know they're fucking useless. But that doesn't stop content creators like Dixie D'Amelio from trying. Babysitting, great. That's right, Georgia. Is that trying? What a gamer. Oh. I guess it's I guess that's trying. As a commentary YouTuber, my bread and butter is making fun of people. And since I'm a commentary YouTuber, I'm borderline mentally retarded. So I need low-hanging fruit like TikTok to keep me afloat. Or Reddit. But TikTok is so overdone, and I feel like talking about old vines would just be like the same shit, only less interesting. So I decided to take a look at a movie that was the byproduct of Vine, featuring one of its biggest creators. Today I'm gonna be talking about Expelled, featuring Cameron Dallas. If you don't know who Cameron Dallas is, I'm not surprised. Uh, he was one of the MagCon boys alongside Nash Greer, for example. If you don't know who Nash Greer is, uh, he was infamous for creating an extremely homophobic yet extremely based vine about gay people having AIDS. It's not a gay thing. Yes, it is! And if you don't know what MagCon is, I mean, there's I, there's no point. It's, ir it's irrelevant. But for some reason, this movie is relevant to me. I can't articulate why. I remember just feeling a very angry when I saw the trailer for this movie back in 2014. And I don't know, I've always like had this desire to go through it and watch it. And so recently, I finally did. In fact, I watched it twice for this fucking video, which was terrible. So I'll be introducing you to this tragic masterpiece. This is Expelled, featuring Cameron Dallas. The movie starts with us venting because we're sus imposters from among us. Yes, I had to make that joke. Yes, I know it'll be dead in two years. I don't care. The main character is Felix, played by Cameron Dallas. You know, one of my ex-girlfriends once told me I look like Cameron Dallas, which I know is rough, but it's not nearly as bad as my most recent ex-girlfriend telling me I look like Pete Davidson. Like, no, I don't look like Pete Davidson. You're just attracted to men who look like they're fucking dying. The Dean, Mr. Truman, tells Felix that he has two suspensions on his record. One for public indecency and the other for money laundering and I'm not <laughs> I'm not making that up however Mr. Truman then informs Felix that he's received his third suspension for hacking into the school vending machine I'm expelling you Felix leading him to be expelled which explains the title <laughs> upon learning about his expulsion Felix is happy because school is bad I don't know how to thank you Felix then pulls the fire alarm to prevent Mr. Truman from calling his mom, which is surprisingly the first of many felonies that Felix will be committing in this movie. On average. Why the fuck is he wearing a top hat? I mean, as you can see, Felix is a waste of semen like you wouldn't believe. I mean, he isn't worth swallowing. That's a waste of stomach capacity. He isn't worth the tissues that you'd waste cleaning him off your stomach. Hell, I wouldn't even waste the soap and water that it would take to scrub him off the sheets. Trust me when I say that this motherfucker should have stayed in the balls. We then meet Felix's best friend, Danny, who is oddly recognizable, but I have no clue who he is and I don't care enough to actually look up what he was in. But I recognize him, so hey, there's something. You're insane! That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is foreshadowing. Felix rushes home and logs into r slash livestream fails. It's always done. What a fucking name! But he's interrupted by a call on Skype. Felix then uses a very convincing woman's voice. Expelled? We're then introduced to Felix's girl boss mom and cuck father. I mean, look at this guy. He's definitely eaten cum off his wife's foot before. And before I get any comments that are like, Oh, FXK, how do you know that's in cuckold porn? What do you watch cuckold porn? Yes. Yes, I do. And no, I'm not the cuck. And to be honest, I'm not the bull either. Like for me, I like to imagine that I'm walking down the street and I like peek through the window and I'm just like, holy shit, that guy's fucking that guy's wife. Like that's kind of hot, you know? And I'm like, I'm just, I'm, a, I'm an observer. Okay. Nothing more. I'm not a cuck. It's art. Okay. I mean, at least I don't watch like NRT or whatever the fuck it's called. Felix talks to the knickknacks on his shelf, indicating that he has schizophrenia, but conveniently enough, his parents are deaf. Looks like I'm gonna need a new report card. Felix needs a new report card, and there are seven Khajiit merchant tents in which he can procure a forged report card from. Your money or your life. 
six of which are staff. So he opts for the only student that can get him a forged report card, which is his ex-girlfriend, Vanessa, who I was very sad to learn is not nearly as hot as she was in her picture. And I checked, she was 18 when this fucking movie got filmed, or I fuck you. But it is funny, when I was researching this video, I found out that the actor for Vanessa, Andrea Russett, was on an episode of Catfish, and I actually watched that episode, but I remember watching that episode, and they are talking about how this celebrity is having her pictures used by a catfish, and she doesn't like it, and I'm just like... I don't know who this person is. So she's like that kind of famous, like famous, but nobody fucking gives a fuck. So after a two minute conversation that goes absolutely nowhere, they have another conversation, but this time on the stairs. Vanessa and Felix both need a favor. In exchange for a forged report card, Felix is going to help Vanessa win the election for the student body president, which requires Felix and Vanessa to sabotage the campaign of Stacey Richards, her opponent. Now, Vanessa, you gotta tread lightly here, okay? If you go too overboard, the Groypers are gonna break into the teacher's lounge, and before you know it, the FBI is gonna be breaking into your fucking Cabo mansion. Or whatever the fuck Donald Trump lives, I don't fucking know. I want you to enter. That can be arranged. What's the plan? All it takes is a single tweet. You have no clue how right you are, Felix. So how is Felix gonna destroy Stacey Richards' campaign? Well, Felix reveals that there's a Twitter account that reports on drama throughout the school, and holy fuck, this is literally an analogy for modern day Twitter. So like any logical person in this situation would do, the next step is to fucking break into somebody's fucking house. <laughs> Get it! Holy! <laughs> Oh, look, it's this guy again. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. What the fuck? What was the point of silently breaking into the house if you're just gonna fucking jump scare him like that? Like, both of you screamed really fucking loud. Wouldn't his parents hear? I feel like you would have a better chance of just walking up to the front door and knocking. But why is Felix breaking into Danny's house? Well, considering that this is a preteen movie, Someone's gotta be the hacker, and conveniently, Felix's best friend is a fucking hacker. So Danny starts keyboard smashing until something happens, which was the same strategy that the developers of Cyberpunk used. Wake the fuck up, Samurai. Danny nearly poops his pants. Nearly poop my pants. Danny reveals that the owner of the Roxy account is none other than... Holy... Which is kind of like perfect, right? <laughs> so I'm assuming that the original reason that they wanted to hack into the Twitter account was so they could tweet some shit like Stacy Richards has a fish pussy, but now they have literal evidence that she is literally Keemstar. <laughs> Let's just beat her to death. She'll lose the race if she's exposed. She'll lose the race if we beat her to death. Jesus Christ. Felix then begins the plan, which is to unironically dox Stacy Richards. Behind me is Roxy's IP address. Mr. Truman sees what's going on and tries to intercept Felix in one of his many f literal felonies, but Felix escapes in the nick of time. Felix then brings his forged report card to show his mom, before realizing that the grades haven't changed. Felix then runs off on his bicycle. Crap. Did he just say crap? And Felix is like a junior in high school. Why the fuck is he saying crap? I feel like the last time I said crap, I was probably like 12 years old. Yeah, that's right. After I turned 13, I was straight onto my shit era. Felix confronts Vanessa, who's getting ready for the school play. This conversation is once again completely useless. I mean, the two minutes that I wasted watching this, I could have spent checking my white privilege. I'm with you boys, all right? Martin Luther King was based. The play begins, and this is another just useless fucking scene that doesn't need to be here. And he completely ruins the performance, but I mean, this guy really enjoyed it. Oh, all of, all of them enjoyed it, cool, okay. Felix returns home, and there's a giant crate at the door for some reason. So I realize at this point, the last four minutes of this movie have been Felix running away from home, ruins a play, and comes back home and Nothing has changed at all. The only difference is now he has to explain to his parents why he ran away. Felix, of course, gets caught by his parents as he tries to sneak in, and you can tell that it's really late at night because both of his parents are wearing bathrobes, and if I've learned anything from modern cinema is that when it's really late, your parents start wearing bathrobes. At this point, Felix looks more sus than a character from Among Us. I mean, how the fuck is he gonna get out of this one? Hey, guys. Where were you? The school play. I'm in it. Oh, okay, so that last scene wasn't a total waste of four minutes, right? <laughs> wrong. I mean, Felix could have just, like, fucked off for a couple hours. You know, he could have, like, stolen from an ATM or something, but he, I mean, that last scene just makes him canonically less of a liar, which doesn't matter considering the entire plot is based around Felix fucking lying to people. Also, Felix's dad does, like, a, a butthole mouth, and it really pisses me off. Sing us something from the play. <laughs> well, I don't... 
I don't, I can't. Yeah, this, this just doesn't make any sense. I am the wind. I love how he like initially refuses to sing and that somehow convinces her that this situation doesn't make sense. But then he does sing and then it's fine. Listen, it was unfair of me to be like that last night. I'm sorry. Felix is like actually like gaslighting his parents. Like it's actually kind of fucked up. Felix then starts walking around with his shirt off because this movie wasn't painful enough. Your life is a never ending series of missed opportunities. Don't care, didn't ask, plus you fell off, plus you're white. Felix blows shit up with the worst special effects I've ever seen. We then cut to Felix drinking orange juice out of a blender, which I don't understand. Felix orders a pizza and the delivery girl is none other than the crackhead from Kids React. I really wanted to bang her back when she was on Kids React. What? I was 13 years old when she was on Kids React. She's she's older than me. I, fuck you. I don't want to bang her when she was four. Okay, I'm gonna stop. You look familiar. Did you go to Eastwood? Okay, so I don't understand that she recognizes Felix, and they go to the same school, but she's not in school right now. I mean, that means that he's ordering a pizza between the times of like three and five, which is just such a weird time to order a pizza. Like, what about dinner, dude? I'm analyzing this movie way too much. Felix then goes to bribe Danny with pizza. Pizza. I need you to help me break into the school. Pizza slap! There you go, ladies and gentlemen. The only part of the movie that I smiled at. That's right, pizza slap is the funniest part of this movie. It's all downhill from here. So Felix still needs to change his grades so he can show his report card to his parents. So he has to devise a new plan to change his grades, but he needs the security code for the grading system or some shit. I didn't pay attention. So Felix then sexually harasses Stacy Richards and then extorts her for the security code. Cause I got a great extracurricular activity for you. During the preparation for his next felony, Felix is interrupted by his mother who is wearing a bathrobe because it's nighttime. And get to bed at a reasonable hour. Oh yeah, mom, that's rich. As you can tell by Felix's bathrobeless attire, he has no plans of going to bed at a reasonable hour. There are crimes to be committed. Felix meets up with Danny, who is actually dressed to commit a crime. And then Felix starts like gaslighting him and telling him that he's weird for dressing like somebody who's about to commit a crime. Are you robbing a bank? Well, no, Felix, he's not robbing a bank, but he's breaking into a government building. So... I mean, it's different, but but it requires a bit of care, to say the least. So they break into the school wearing normal clothes because I guess that's cool. They get to Mr. Truman's office and find Mr. Truman still there, passed out in a drunken stupor. In the process of changing the grades, Danny bugs Mr. Truman's computer so they can keep tabs on him. Danny tries to steal Mr. Truman's keyboard, but Felix, being the morally correct character, feels like they should return it. So he enters Mr. Truman's office, not noticing that Mr. Truman is not asleep anymore. He's not even in the room and then he gets fucking caught by Mr. Truman. So Mr. Truman calls the police because he's a snitch. He ain't got no love for the streets. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. So Felix is arrested. Oh shit, look, it's, it's a This Means War album cover. Nobody knows what I'm talking about, but yeah. Felix then starts talking to himself in prison. Where have I seen this before? <laughs> Felix's dad comes to pick him up, but it's not really his dad. It's his brother and failed Jim Carrey impressionist, Ben. Uh, spoiler alert. This guy sucks. So Ben has been in juvie for a little while now, and we discover that he just broke out and escaped in the giant crate that we saw earlier. You see, this is what we call subtext. And what, you think that cans of fish and Attack on Titan were good? Nah, fuck no, this is peak fucking cinema, baby. They try to sneak back into their house, but since Ben is a silly, goofy guy, he causes a bit of a ruckus. So their mom wakes up to go check, but the dad doesn't, which seems conventionally inaccurate. But since I've created this headcanon where the dad is a cuck, I've kind of decided that at that current moment, the bull was also with them, and the bull was grasping the dad in his big muscular black arms and keeping him safe while the girl boss mom went to go fuck shit up. What happened to going to bed at a reasonable hour? Yeah, mom, I can tell it's not a reasonable hour. You're wearing a bathrobe, okay? While Ben hides, Felix gaslights his mom, blah, 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 blah. You get the fucking gist. The next day, Felix gets his report card from Danny. And let me tell you, when his parents finally see that report card, they pog and wojack like you wouldn't fucking believe, baby. It was truly an epic moment in gaming. But of course, his problem isn't solved quite yet. Felix then learns that his mom has set up a parent-teacher conference meeting with one of his teachers. I'm gonna fake a parent-teacher conference. We're gonna need a shady middle-aged man. You know what, Felix? I changed my mind. You got this in the bag, baby. I mean, geniuses like you don't need school. You have Bill Gates, LeBron James. There's probably others. Felix meets the janitor in the closet alone and asks for a favor. 
I'm not kidding. He asks him to pretend to be his teacher. We cut to Ben playing with horseshoes. And I realize now that the only reason that Ben is here is to like normalize Felix. Like Felix is a dumbass degenerate, but next to Ben, he's kind of the voice of reason. So this is what we like to call in the business, lazy writing. Also, Ben is dressed like Ace Ventura, which just causes me immense pain. You're gonna do the imposter- Felix then sneaks the janitor into his house so he can set him up for a parent-teacher conference. However, when he goes into the attic, Ben doesn't know what's going on and throws a horseshoe at him in self-defense, knocking him out and foiling Felix's plan. Alright, this next part is just really boring and dumb, but I mean, there is one scene where Ben aims a sniper scope at a teacher at a schoolyard. Ben is pretty much trying to knock out the teacher with darts so, like, he can't make the meeting or whatever. Ben, like, shoots himself three times with the sedative and, like, starts crawling eventually, and very luckily, Ben is able to succeed in knocking out the teacher and only moments before Felix's mom was informed that he's been expelled. Luckily, Ben used the right amount of sedative. Let that line soak in for a second. You feel good? You having fun? I'm not. Ben is sent back to Juvie and thank fucking God because he's been in this movie for like 15 minutes and I'm already sick of him. And it was also at this point that I was wondering like where's the crackhead? Like she was in the movie for like a second. Is that her entire cameo? And wouldn't you know, she shows up. Let's do something fun. I don't understand this movie at all. Like the last time they talked, she was just delivering a pizza. I mean, she didn't even know him beforehand. She just recognized him. And now she shows up to his house randomly and asks to do something fun. Like what exactly is she planning to do? Is my mind in the gutter to assume that she wants to have sex? What's considered like fun in this universe even? I mean, it is pretty late. Maybe they can wear bathrobes together. I think I've broken into Eastwood enough times this week. Yeah, Felix, I mean, once is more than enough, but you do it like every fucking day. Also, I completely glossed over this fact. Why the fuck does he go to school every single day? I mean, he talks about the expulsion being like his vacation, but he still goes to school. Like he's wearing a backpack. What's in, what's in his fucking backpack? Rocks that he found? Fuck off. Anyway, Felix decides to get in the car with, uh, I don't know what her name is actually. <laughs> Katie. Okay, when did they ever say her name? Did they ever say her name? So Felix and Katie decide to go spy on Mr. Truman. Whoa, is that Mr. Truman? Yeah. <laughs> what is he doing? I don't know, he orders a barbecue chicken pizza every Saturday night. Why? No idea. Wanna find out? Maybe he's hungry. <laughs> so apparently it's really suspicious that Mr. Truman eats barbecue chicken pizzas every Saturday. So they go to Danny to try and figure out what's going on. And it's real convenient because Danny bugs Mr. Truman's computer to monitor his computer activity. They then find out that Mr. Truman has a gambling addiction. And even more important is that he transfers money from the school to his own personal bank account to gamble. Dude, that is like serious jail time right there. How is that the first time that line has been spoken in this movie? I mean, Felix should be in fucking Alcatraz at this point. Felix once again makes the very intelligent decision to meet an old man in a secluded area alone, this time at night, and to blackmail him. This movie is made for children. Children are supposed to watch this. With this blackmail, Mr. Truman decides to reinstate Felix. However, Vanessa, in a total bitch move, decides to convince Mr. Truman otherwise. I'm not mad at her for foiling Felix's plans. I'm mad at her that the movie has to be longer now because of what she's done. Mr. Truman gets in contact with Felix's mom and agrees to speak with her about Felix. At the same time, Felix discovers that the hard drive containing all of his evidence is missing, implying that Vanessa has taken the blackmail that Felix needs to enroll. I mean, there's only like two minutes left in this movie. What the fuck else could possibly happen? Felix talks to Vanessa and she immediately fesses up and says that she took the blackmail, destroyed it or whatever. And now the only evidence is Mr. Truman's physical laptop itself. So Felix goes to Mr. Truman's office and distracts Mr. Truman while Danny tries to steal the laptop. Mr. Truman informs Felix that he's called the police once again, but this time Danny has the laptop and he threatens to show the police all of his dastardly deeds. I mean, it's a felony, but apparently in this movie, like felonies are just dastardly deeds. And Felix is one. Mr. Truman concedes and tells his mom that Felix is a straight A student and Felix's life is back to normal. Is that the different animals album cover? Dude, these guys like Jen, no way. Felix and Katie kiss. Ew. Ew. What the fuck? Why do they need so much tongue? And that's the end of the movie. In memory of Kim Kosky. This poor woman. Is this her legacy? How fucking twisted is that shit? Jesus. It's morbid. Morbid. Morbi morbius. It's morbid. Sorry, Kim. I'm sorry. So what have I learned about this movie? Well, it's that the ends justify the means. Lie to your parents break into buildings, hack into government-funded computer systems, blackmail important faculty members at your school, but most importantly, 
Sunglasses make you cool, and wearing bathrobes means it's time for bed. So what are my thoughts on the movie? It sucked. That's the end of the video.